That's not your name. You will always be my Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer, in San Diego, every Sunday from 4 to 5 p.m. You can also stream the show at am1170theanswer.com. My website is educateforlife.org. And our show tonight is live if you're joining us here. If you want to call in and ask a question, we have some really smart guys here uh, today in studio. We're live. You can call 888-344-1170 and uh, ask all kinds of questions. One of my guests this evening is Dr. Andy McIntosh. He's all the way from Great Britain. Dr. McIntosh, thank you for being here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. We have a little. Uh, we had some little controversy between America and Great Britain yeah, before the did, show, yeah, but just a few years ago, 1776 and all that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the tea and the taxes and all the rest. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about Andy. I want to brag on him. Uh, just uh, uh, flatter him here, and he he's earned a PhD in combustion theory from the Cranfield Institute of Technology, Bedford, England. He also have a doctorate of science degree from the University of Wales. He was appointed a fellow of the Institute of Energy with a chartered engineer status. Now, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds important. He became the professor of thermodynamics and combustion theory at the University of Leeds. His research has included reducing supersonic drag of fighter planes. That's awesome. That just sounds awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Testing airflow through redesigned wind turbines. Ignition studies of fluids and solids, pressure interactions with flames, and the movement of smoke and fire. Okay, so this is uh, pretty awesome credentials here. But what I like most here is that uh, Dr. McIntosh is the author of a book called Genesis for Today. And what that book is all about is talking about the Bible and its relevance to our lives today and to science today and to how we think today and how we live today. Pretty awesome. Now, if you like what you hear tonight, tomorrow night there is a debate. It's tomorrow night, sep September 28th, 7 p.m. at... Uh, the Creation Museum in Santee here in uh, San Diego County. And that is uh, creationsd.org if you want to look that up. Or you can look it up on Dr. McIntosh's site, truthandscience.org. He's going to be debating with Dr. Peter Payne over Genesis and what does Genesis actually teach us about the age of the earth. So we're going to look at this from both a scientific perspective and a biblical perspective. What does uh, what do we know about the age of the earth? That's tomorrow, Monday evening. Now on Tuesday evening, there's going to be another debate with Dr. McIntosh. This one, he's debating uh, the guest I had on last week, Jeff, Jeff Archer. Uh, he's going to be de debating Jeff. Jeff is from the Atheist Coalition of San Diego. He's actually the president of the Atheist Coalition of San Diego. That's at San Diego State University in the Alumni Hall building. The Excuse me, there's no cost, but the parking is $2 per hour. So uh, the parking structure is right next to the Alumni Hall. Now, I get to mediate both of these debates. Um, I was a wrestler, and so <laughs> if anybody gets out of line, uh, I promise that I'll put them in a headlock. And so, uh, you know, we'll be okay. So I hope you guys can join us. Our, our listeners out there can join us. We'd love to have you out. It's going to be a full house at both debates and a great time. Our other guest this evening is Eric Hovind of creationtoday.org. A little bit about Eric. He's the president and founder of the ministry Creation Today. It's based out of Florida. I hear it's pretty human in Florida. Is that And yeah? it is yeah. it is hot and humid. What hotter here or hotter there? Yeah, right now I think it's hotter here though. You guys in San Diego, I feel sorry for you right yeah, now. Yeah, I, this I is feel, rough. I feel sorry for me too. <laughs> All right. So what Eric does is he uses the truth of creation to reach pe people with the good news of Jesus Christ. And he has shared that message, this is pretty astounding, in every single state, all 50 states, as well as five foreign countries. He has his own uh, radio program or uh, YouTube program. You can watch it. it. It streams all over the world. It's called the Creation Today Show. And uh, he covers all kinds of languages. And currently, the resources that are produced by Creation Today have been translated into 42 different languages. That is an accomplishment. That we don't is, we don't have awesome. British though. We haven't haven't done that language yet. <laughs> no, you need um, to try. Okay, yeah. all right. I can guarantee you'll fail. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you know, and something that Creation Today is doing that I'm really excited about, and we're going to actually talk about, is producing a 3D movie on Genesis. Yeah, that's going to be And uh, that is pretty, I'm looking forward pretty to that. incredible. You know, and Eric, uh, Eric's a special person to me also because him and I are actually collaborating on an effort to put together a very uh, effective and uh, comprehensive apologetics curriculum so that kids and adults can be prepared to be able to deal with all the hard questions that come our way, which there's lots of them these days. There's a very hostile uh, world, uh, you know, coming against Christianity. And so yeah. um, all kinds of good stuff we're going to talk about tonight. 
And uh, Eric, I wanted to start off by just asking you, you know, you're making this movie, you're spending a lot of money on making this movie, raising funds and support, and why make a movie on Genesis? What's the big deal here? Well, when we look at what's going on in our um, society and in the church culture today, we realize that there's a lot of people that don't understand the very foundation of the Word of God itself. And if we don't understand Genesis, man, how do we understand the rest of the Bible? People say all the time, man, don't, don't worry about Genesis. Just teach what Jesus taught, you know? And so I find myself going, well, Jesus taught Genesis. He's the one who talked about marriage being, you know, Adam and Eve being at the beginning and, you know, where death and sin come from. And so I want to focus on Genesis because the, the movies really are the language of the culture. Now in here, uh, probably you guys have read Darwin's On the Origin of Species, but average listener out there, probably not. Maybe, maybe 1% of the people out there have read On the, on the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Mm. How many people out there, though, watched Jurassic Park? Most of you guys have seen Jurassic Park. See, we don't get our theology and our, and our worldview through books anymore. We get them through movies. Oh, that's a good point. We wanted to take the, the creation account, the biblical creation account, and bring it to theaters to allow people to experience creation. So we're doing it in 3D to make sure it'll reach out and grab you. And uh, I, I tell you, this project, we just had a Genesis movie party here and showed people about 30 minutes of the film, and they were blown away. This is going to be one rockin' Christian film that depicts the truth of God and the truth of the creation and uh, gives a lot of science that, I'll be honest, it kind of beats up on evolution just a little bit. <laughs> that's fantastic. I'm very, very excited about that. I can't wait to see it myself. So uh, that's going to be uh, excellent. And then uh, Dr. McIntosh, um, you know, you have a you have a PhD in combustion theory. Mm -hmm. I don't really even know what that yeah, is. That sounds but, awesome. And, and you, <laughs> burning, right? Just think of burning. Burning. Okay. Okay. Very good. You know, there's a quote by you um, that I uh, somebody quoted you on uh, one of the websites. I was just uh, you know looking into your background and everything, and something you said uh, really stuck with me. It says you said my career in mathematics and science has led me very much to the view that the world and the universe show powerful evidence of design. And that's a pretty uh, bold statement. You know, there's a lot of people out there that would say something like, you know what, um, my career, quote, in science or whatever the case, has led me to conclude, you well, know. Let, let, let's start with the first one, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Where does mathematics come from? Well, uh, I Humans would, uh, invented yeah, it. Yeah, Where yeah. does logic come from? <laughs> yeah, we made that Where up. Where does the ability to think rationally and to be able to say that something is right or wrong in science, you, mm -hmm. something's either right or wrong in pure science. That's yeah. So mathematics is just the language of science, really. It's the language of logic. Where does logical thought come from? It can't come from neurons. It, it, it evolved. Math Dr. McIntosh, uh, it, it, no, it, it see, evolved. They just can't have that. And that's what the sort of arguments that I'll be dealing with in a couple of days' time when I'm speaking with Jeffrey. Yeah. You know, where does, where does the idea of thinking come from? Mm. You can't say that neurons think. Molecules don't think. So it's got to be me that's think. Well, who's me? And, you know, you've got identity issues here. And really, when you think about science big time, um, it actually does show you that there has to be a mind behind us ourselves and a mind behind this universe. Now, you're, you're not saying that this is an option. You're saying this has to be the case. Yeah, the only way to think rationally is because we're made in the image of a rational being. Mm. That's the only way to make sense of science. Even the big big boys in science, even though they weren't Christians necessarily, but you've got the famous Hungarian scientist with Wittgenstein. You won't know him, but sure. you know, in mathematics, he's Thanks. quite I, well known. I feel like you're, you, yeah, you're but you know, Einstein. Me, we've I, heard <laughs> of we've heard of him, and yeah. people like that. These folk realised that there had to be a mind behind it. Now, of course, the identity of the mind is up for grabs just from looking at the science. Yeah. But but it's not unscientific to come to the the whole area of science with a Christian worldview. We've got this false idea that if you're going to be in science, you can't be a Christian. That's absolutely foolish. Yeah. Because some of the greatest scientists like Isaac Newton and others be Kepler and other great names in science that most of us have heard of. Yeah. These were people who were at least God-fearing. They weren't all Bible-believing Christians, but they were people who really had a God sense. 
And it wasn't against their thinking to go into science. Mm. You know, my guests tonight are Dr. Andy McIntosh and Eric Hovind. And when we come back, we're going to continue this discussion. There's a debate on Tuesday, and the, the topic of the debate is, does atheism make sense of reality? When we get back, we're going to continue this discussion and try to figure out, hey, where does logic come from? Where do numbers come from? Where does this stuff come from? We're going to be right back. Stay with us. We've been given a car, been forgiven, risen, we live in it, give them our all. Rise up from your past, it's holding you down. This moment is all that matters, the future is now. Join the Creation Earth History Museum for our 10th Annual Museum Day Family Festival, Saturday, September 26th. Hi, this is Jason Payne, museum curator. I want to personally invite you and your families to a free, fun-filled event, including new exhibits, testimonies from leading scientific experts, meet NASA astronaut Colonel Jeffrey Williams, and many others. Activities for the entire family. So join us Saturday, September 26th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go online to learn more at creationsd.org or call 619-599-1104. 619-599-1104. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. If you've got questions, we've got answers. AM 1170, The Answer. I'm giving it all away. No more hiding, no more stalling. I hear you calling me, and I'm coming. See me running. I give it. Thanks for listening today. This is Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego. And you can stream the show all over the world at am1170theanswer.com. We're live this evening with my guests, Dr. Andy McIntosh and Eric Hovind. The number to call in if you have questions is 888-344-1170. And um, I wanted to give Eric you a chance. You were talking, we, we, we kind of got cut off in the middle of a discussion there, but um, you were going to say something about uh, dealing with the, the whole numbers and, and logic and so well, forth. Well, yeah, I, I love what Dr. McIntosh is saying because he's right. The The material world cannot come up with thoughts, cannot come up with logic. And you got logic, uh, math, science, and reason, these these and, and morality, excuse me, these things can't come from the material world. I wanted to find out what do you think, what do you find people saying? Because when I engage atheists, they when I engage an them on the street, and I start and I start going along this line. There is line, no answer. The, yeah, they don't. And they but, don't have one. They just... They just skirt around it. A, they try and say that, that, you know, logic and mathematics just cr came out of the pea soup over billions of years. So that's nonsense. Right. And there's no way wanna, it can. They want to go on and talk about something scientific or s talk about the scripture and how the scripture has errors. And I'm going, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. You can't even get logic. You can't yeah. even get reason. So, so atheism does not make sense of the very foundations of thought. And that to me is the death blow. It's almost like. Why go on beyond that? Why am I going to talk about contradictions in the Bible when you can't make sense of the very idea of a thought? Yeah. <laughs> now, so so this is a this is an interesting point you bring up. I had the same discussion with an atheist. We were having the discussion. I said, "You have faith." She said, "I don't have faith. I I only rely on evidence." And I said, "Well, you have faith that your logic is dependable." And and she she really this was the first time she had ever heard something like this. She she was really kind of caught off guard and she said, "Wait a second. What do you mean?" I said, well, by what proof do you know that your logic is rational and reasonable, that the conclusions you're coming to about reality are dependable mm. if you're just a product of chance? And she she really took a step back. And later on, she said to me, hey, I'd really like to talk to you more about this. I've never mm. I've never thought about this before. Now, I have engaged with people and, and some people will say this. And I'm curious to know what what your guys answer to this question would be is they say, well, we're just like artificial intelligence. 
They say, you know, you can make art things like a robot have artificial intelligence or a video game has artificial intelligence. And they say, so all we are is really complicated um, uh, creatures that are cause and effect creatures, but the cause and effect is so complicated that it looks like we have free will, but we don't actually have free will. It's just it's such a uh, complicated uh, system. That's when you reach out and slap them and say, see what you caused? See what you did? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you, you can't have that. We're not that. endorsing slapping anybody. No, I would. You can't have that because no robot is any better than the program that which was used to make it make those responses. So that very argument falls on the very premise that you've got a robot which is made by somebody ah. who has actually got a mind which has actually programmed that robot to do what it's meant to do. So even if you say that we are robotic, and I don't believe we are, by the way, I think mm. we do have a capacity to make our own decisions. But yeah. even if you were to say that, you'd still have to say that there is a mind behind the programming of the robot. I don't think we are robots because we've actually got the freedom to make decisions. The Bible says, of course, just that. Yes. It says that Adam decided to rebel against God and therefore he was made supremely in the image of God to the extent that he had the ability to decide, I'm going to go the wrong way. Yeah. Now, and for our listeners out there, the, a quick way to explain this, you know, people that say the whole everything's material, um, we can quickly at least cause doubt to that claim by saying, you know, if I move my hand, what's moving my hand? Well, it's my muscles. But what's moving my muscles? It's my nerves. But what's sending the electrical Don't impulse Don't go any further. I'm going to go run a while. Yeah. Exactly. You said you were a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the electrical nerves, uh, pulses are being sent by my brain. But the yeah. question is, what's making the brain yeah, send yeah. those electrical impulses? Exactly. And we would, as, as Bible-believing Christians, we would say the spirit. Well, we would say the person. I mean, obviously, you do get into spiritual issues in the end. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying is that there is something which is transcendent to matter. Mm. And that's what the atheist is trying to deny. And so but everything is telling you from your human experience yeah. that the only way to make sense of reality is that there is a person which is using these brain cells. Mm -hmm. This is just a vehicle. The brain is just a vehicle of the mind. The brain is molecules. It's the brain not, is molecules. Yeah. It's very complicated. We all know that. But, it, you know, it, it's it's more than the neurons. We are actually using the neurons to think. Yeah. But it's a person behind it. You're Kevin. This is Eric. Yeah. And I'm Andy. You yeah. know, we're not defined by the molecules we are. We're defined by the people that are using those mm. molecules. Yeah, I love that. Well, um, I thought we would get, uh, we could go on talking about that for quite a while. I know that gets into a deep subject, but <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, when I deal with atheists, I, I just Skyped with one two days ago, and mm -hmm. I Skype all the time with atheists, and this guy said, Eric, you're the, you're the only one that has an argument that I can't overcome. I mm -hmm. can't get over this argument, and I know I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. out there using it, but they're saying, look, how can I get over this? And I'm saying, look, you can't. That's why the Bible says to deny God is foolishness. It's not... It's not just engaging in name calling. It's saying, come on, when you deny the supernatural, when you decide, uh, deny the creator, the mind behind the matter, you're, you're foolish. You also deny humanity. Yes, you, you see, do. Yeah. Because if you say that we're just molecules, then what is Kevin Coven Conover? Mm. He's just a bunch of molecules. Yeah. Eric's just another bunch of molecules, and so am I. And we so lose we've, our lost value. we've lost identity. Yeah, yeah. And, and what, that's what's happening in our society today. Mm -hmm. We've lost we're not, identity. We're nothing different than a leaf falling from a tree. Exactly. Yeah. What They're, one bag of molecules does to another bag of molecules doesn't really matter. Mm. Exactly. And that's what people are believing these days. Yeah. And so we and we see the natural consequences play out in Absolutely. our culture and society. Absolutely. Now, um, I want I want you to answer this question too, um, because I hear this very frequently, and I'm curious again, to know your answer. Somebody says, look it, um, there are lots of things we don't know and I don't know is an acceptable answer. So <laughs> I often hear a skeptic say, look it, science is always learning. Therefore, because we're always learning, we're okay with saying I don't know and we're okay with having a blind spot uh, at least temporarily and potentially indefinitely. And so somebody will often say something like, uh, science will eventually figure it out. And for the time being, even though that question is not able to be explained, we're just going to deal with that. Now, well, when we get back, I know you guys are ready to go here, yeah. but when we blind get back... Faith, <laughs> blind faith, blind okay. faith. Got... Okay, sorry. So we're, we're going to answer these questions, but um, my guests this evening are Dr. Andy McIntosh and uh, Eric Hovind, and uh, these guys are awesome. We're going to... We're going to, uh, Andy, we'll get you the restroom. <laughs> We're still on air, Andy. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, 
uh, we'll be right back. That kind of threw my thought process off. Okay, ah! we'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. But the truth is I don't know where I let you go and lost my way. Said it would never happen, then walked at the door yeah, once again. Can't even start to imagine a life without you again. Not all home inspections are created equal. Experience matters. Joe DeMars and his team at Housemaster have performed inspections in San Diego for 22 years plus and performed over 10,000 inspections for commercial, multiple family, apartments, and residential. So call before you buy or sell and protect your investment. Call 619-660-7866 or online at sandiego.housemaster.com. Home inspections done right. Guaranteed. 619-660-7866. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. AM 1170, The Answer, and AM 1170, TheAnswer.com. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms. Thanks for tuning in to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego. And uh, my guests tonight are Dr. Andy McIntosh, who just made it back just in time, got into the chair uh, before we were on air. He just came back from the bathroom. And uh, also Eric Hovind. And uh, these guys are great. We're having a good time here. It's like everybody's like hyped up on caffeine or something. I don't, I don't know what's going on. But i um, glad we're, we've got a lot of energy here. We have two debates. One is tomorrow night. And that is out at the Creation Museum. And uh, that's Dr. McIntosh is going to be debating with, uh, I believe it is... Dr. Peter Payne. Dr. Peter Payne. And they're going to be talking about how do we know how old the earth is? And what is the right conclusion there? What does science tell us? What does the Bible tell us? And then on Tuesday, the 29th, we're going to be out at SDSU at the Alumni Hall. That's 7 p.m. And uh, the only cost is parking. And this is going to be between Dr. McIntosh and Jeff Archer. Archer. He's the president of the Atheist Coalition of San Diego. And I want to give um, a little, uh, you know, promo here. Apna Hope, A P N A H O P E dot O R G. Apna Hope is who has gotten this off the ground. Both these debates, they put a lot of effort into this, and I just really uh, encourage you to visit their website, check, it, see what they're all about, and uh, just support them and get involved. Also, Ratio Christie, Ratio Christie dot org dot uh, slash S D S U. Ratio Christie. Ra- it's to ratio. do with rationality. Ratio. ratio. What we were talking about earlier. Okay. Reason very, for Christ. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And uh, that's uh, uh, Ross Chenault is uh, heads that up, and Mindy Chenault. And uh, my website is educateforlife.org. So um, what we we're talking about is we're, we're talking about different evidences for gods. I want to talk for God. I want to talk a little bit about thermodynamics and physics. Um, this is what Dr. McIntosh, uh, his degree is in combustion theory and thermodynamics, uh, and he has a doctorate of science. And um, so, you know, a lot of people will say, look, it, evolution works. And, uh, you know, we even have Christians that are theistic evolutionists. You have uh, people like uh, Francis Collins, mm-hmm. BioLogos, mm-hmm. and you know we're we're arguing that evolution does not make sense. And from your perspective, uh, Dr. McIntosh, from a, the perspective of physics and mm-hmm. specific, mm-hmm. specifically thermodynamics. By the way, for our audience who's not real into the science or technical language, thermodynamics, right? A thermos. You have a thermostat, you have thermal goggles, mm-hmm. you have a thermometer, right? Uh, we use these words all the time. We don't realize that that just has to do with heat yep. and what we would call entropy. Yep. And no, no, no. Heat, yeah, heat is the uh, transfer of energy. Yes, transfer of energy. So from your perspective, why is the issue of thermodynamics a problem for the theory of evolution? Well, we just need to be clear here. When I say thermodynamics, I'm not referring directly to the second law, although there are connections sure. to it. 
because many people have banded that about. That's for a closed system, right? Now, when you're dealing with the solar system, of course, we all have to acknowledge you're dealing with an open system. Mm. The only thing which is closed is the whole universe, in my view. But just dealing with the solar system and the world, obviously, it's an open system. So the evolutionists will always say, and Richard Dawkins has said it to me personally, he said, well, there's loads of energy out there that can make machinery. <laughs> but that is at, utter nonsense. When you actually come to thermodynamics of an open system, right? So I'm being very clear. Now, I'm speaking about an open system, right? Just my, let, me, let, me, let me finish okay, on this, ahead, Kevin, because I think most of the hearers will understand what I'm saying. Okay. When you're dealing even with an open system, you've got lots of energy coming in. Does it build computers? Does it build aeroplanes? Does it make machinery? Can it make a jet engine? The answer is no, not unless the information is coming in as well across the boundary in order to do that. So machinery loosely termed to mean that which can actually do things and make things propagate and use work, use energy in a fixed way, which is actually going to do something useful. That does not come about by accident. Okay, now I want to just I want to clarify for our listeners when when Dr. McIntosh is talking about an open system and a closed system, what we're looking at here is that uh, uh, evolutionists, generally speaking, will say the Earth is an open system, which means it receives sunlight, so energy is coming in, and because it's receiving energy, it can override the normal process of things downgrading, mm -hmm. or you can have um, you can have one system steal energy or, or kind of borrow energy mm -hmm. from another system mm -hmm. so it won't experience entropy like the other system would. And entrop so, entropy is generally the idea the that... The loss of usable energy. The, the loss, loss of energy good. which can do anything useful. Okay, okay. And you'll still undergo that sort of process with lots of heat coming in. All it does is heat things up generally. Mm. Even if you have a differential rate of energy coming in, it won't produce a jet engine. It won't produce machinery <laughs> which will actually do something useful. Okay, so doesn't the, sun, doesn't the sun's energy basically destroy all of our machinery? I mean, when I look well, around, exactly. In the end, all, if you're in the Nevada desert, you're not going to suddenly build a machine out there, are you? <laughs> well, I mean, even the sun's. I look at my car and I go, the sun's energy destroys my car. It doesn't yes, build it, my car. It up. gradually de disintegrates. Yeah, deteriorates it. Yeah. So, so from this perspective, what you're trying to say is that energy, in and of itself, does not lead to um, more complex. Machines exactly. Let me now use an illustration which is pertinent to this energy coming in the Nevada desert. Okay. If I have a lovely big solar cell out there in the Nevada desert, now I can make use of the sun's energy to do something useful, which is, of course, putting there a machine, which I'll use the technical term, Kevin. Some of the guys who are listening to me will understand. What it does is it raises the local, what we call free energy. Free energy is the energy able to do something useful. And it raises locally the free energy. Now, what you need in order to use the energy coming in from the sun is something that's going to raise locally the free energy, solar cell or something like that, which can actually make electricity, make a turbine. Yeah. So basically, the evolutionist is on the back foot all the way. In fact, mm. he's not just on the back foot. He's falling right over because the argument is not in his favor. If he's got loads of energy coming in, it does nothing. Doesn't help at all. Yeah. Doesn't help at all. Okay, so so just to clarify again, so Go the on, evolutionist Kevin. position is going to be, the evolutionist position is going to be that that energy somehow gets to maybe a cell or some living organism, and then through that process, that energy uh, somehow can create more and more complex through random mutation and natural selection can create more and more complex organisms or systems. Let me bring it to the nitty gritty. You're okay, right, Kevin. Uh, hold on, Dr. McIntosh. We're just about out of time here. Um, You're always out of time. I, I know. Isn't that Look, crazy? Why don't you do away with the, jing <laughs> do away with the jingles? Let get on with hey, the I, real I, stuff. I, I, I got to pay for this show, Dr. McIntosh. You don't need to pay for it. You've got guys like Eric here. Okay. Keep you going. Eric, Eric, you heard that. Okay. All right, so, man. You're on. So we're going to be right back and uh, we're going to continue this conversation. I'm loving it and uh, having a good time here. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> And going back and forth From doing right to doing wrong Cause we were taught that's who we are well, Come on, get in line right behind me You along with everybody In 1940
1947, Gordon Tucker began serving San Diego County families. Today, the family tradition continues with two stores, Tucker's Valley Furniture and Cash and Carry, both right across the street in El Cajon at Maine and Mollison. Whether you want today's modern, eco-friendly furniture or authentic Amish furniture from solid cherry wood built in America, let the Tucker family serve your family. Learn more at tuckersvalleyfurniture.com. A proud sponsor of Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Do you have one button espresso machines in your home or business? They make delicious coffee drinks, but they're not maintenance free. Express Fix Coffee is San Diego's source for coffee and espresso machine repair, sales, and service. Call Dave Martin at Express Fix Coffee for new and used espresso machines, repairs, parts, and accessories. They'll save you time and money. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-867-3853. Learn more at ExpressFixCoffee.com. Learn about what God is doing on the streets of Hillcrest. City on a Hill San Diego is an exciting ministry raising an army of people who love God in our city. Ryan Smith and his team take the time to talk with and know the people of the community, provide tracts and materials, and build Christian community. See the stories of lives being changed at cityonahillsandiego.com. Call for details, 619-354-2511. City on a Hill San Diego, sharing faith, Hope and love. AM 1170, the answer. Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego. And I am, we're having a great time tonight. I'm with Dr. Andy McIntosh and Eric Hoven, uh, both guys who have been uh, a long time discussing the subjects that are very difficult uh, sometimes to handle in regards to Christianity and the Bible and, and just uh, providing answers to hard questions. Both of these guys have spoken all over the place, uh, been involved in numerous debates. And uh, we're, we're discussing a subject right now this evening uh, thermodynamics, and when we left off, what we were talking about was uh, how does something generate uh, complexity, you know, apart from uh, an intelligent mind? Where does that yeah. come from? Well, um, a classic example of this that I was talking about just on the last section was that you needed a solar cell, right, in order to use the energy. Now, actually, nature does have a solar cell. Mm. It's called the leaf. Yeah. And the leaf is a very complicated surface chemistry which involves chlorophyll and the radiation coming in is converted into sugars which the plant needs and it also by the way gives off oxygen which we need we of need. course and it absorbs the carbon dioxide and it actually makes a, a very useful energy device for the plant, right? So there you've got a system which is effectively a, a, a natural solar cell. Yeah. And, and now, if where it wasn't... Did, now where did the leaf come from is the next question. The leaf cannot evolve off its own bat. You know, Science is going to figure that out one day. See, we'll just now, figure that out you know, one day. Now, now, when people say we will part that, as we had earlier, you raised that question yeah. two, two sessions ago. Well, that is fundamental. The fundamentals of where machinery come from is basically thermodynamics. And I'm saying to you that there is no thermodynamics which is ever going to build a machine without a mind behind it. This is why it says the invisible things of God in Romans 1.20 are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. A leaf, right? Mm. So that they are without excuse. So friends, look, 
we need to grasp that Romans 1.20 is a very powerful argument that we all need to be using. The atheist cannot get away with it. He cannot park it. He cannot say, oh, we'll eventually sort it out. Because they'll never produce a leaf without a mind behind it. They might produce an artificial leaf, but yeah. then that, that will be all due to their mind making one. Yeah. So, so are, you saying, are you saying that without chlorophyll and the leaf, literally, we wouldn't have usable energy no, on well, the planet? No, certainly not I mean, in the plant world. Right. And of course, then, there are other cases... It, the plant world leads to everything else, though, right? I well, mean, according to evolution, it does. But, of course, we believe that God made each individual well, yes. sets of creatures differently. Plants are different to animals. Right, but Animals have a on... respiration system, which takes in oxygen. There's a very complicated cellular system, but which it... takes in energy yeah. and makes it into useful work. It makes the ATP molecule, right? Which we need all the time in yeah. order to exist. But as it pertains to our everyday lives and the existence of living organisms... What Eric, I think, is saying is that the plants are fundamental to our survival. Without right. that, oh yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, I agree with so you. So that there, without Eric. that little bitty molecule that is incredibly well designed, yeah, we're all done. Yeah, exactly. We so when did that exist. thing evolve? So, so really, if <laughs> if if an atheist could or a skeptic could answer the question as to how that uh, chlorophyll could have made itself, then he would have solved a hurdle, which we're saying that that hurdle is never going to be solved. Right. But uh, because th this is the whole kind of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Exactly. Yeah. And so uh, along these same lines, you know, I've heard people say, well, look, what about crystals? Crystals uh, are spontaneously becoming more complex. They are creating order out of disorder. And they're not becoming more complex. They're simply reflecting what's already in the system, right? Such that when they reach a particular temperature, there is a change of state. And they are reflecting the molecular structure, if you like, which has already got that, that behavior. Oh, interesting. In it. Those molecules already have that yeah. design. There's nothing, there's no new information come in. Oh, very You're interesting. You're not making okay. anything new. Okay. So, so this is kind of like that, that would be kind of like saying, look at, we're seeing complexity arise by having water turn to ice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> essentially the same thing. There's no, the, the, well, it, you're dealing with essentially the same substance, but a different temperature and it all collapses down into these this tessellation, if you like, of lots of little molecules getting together in a particular pattern, although no snowflake is exactly the same as another, but it's essentially involving angles and, you know, things so that, that we can predict okay. will take place. So, so that's not a legitimate argument for saying that, nah. for saying that you've overcome entropy. Or, you won't or, build an igloo by freezing water, will you? <laughs> you won't, and the Eskimo won't suddenly get his house, will he? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Get the point. <laughs> that kind of puts it in perspective. Okay, that's good, that's healthy. So here's another question, and I, I, I'm sure this is the same thing. I've heard somebody say uh, that a hurricane is, and maybe this just sounds silly, but I think this is good for our listeners, uh, a hurricane is more complex than just regular air, and a hurricane is spontaneously uh, creating order because of it, it's a hurricane. E even if it's destructive, the the order that's coming about through the hurricane. You can't use a hurricane to stir your tea in the morning. Okay. So a hurricane cannot be usable energy. It is random energy in the sense that you can't predict where it's going to go next. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I live in Pensacola. Yeah. So we trust me, you don't know where those things are the going. Gulf of Mexico knows <laughs> all about it. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's very good. Now, let's talk about... Uh, move this into a kind of another plane and that is the idea of if we get down to the cells and organisms you know for a long time since the 1950s they've been trying to get life from non-life yep amino acids getting to proteins getting to your most basic living organism a yep. cell of some sort yep um how would you respond to somebody who says hey eventually we're going to get this what what are the big hurdles here that that you're going to argue look at you're never going to be able to get there uh look the big issue, Kevin, is information. Because even though I've been talking about thermodynamics and machines, yeah. actually what you've got right down at the molecular level in living systems, both in plants, by the way, and in animals, mm -hmm. and of course in us, is uh, programmed information, right? The it, software, it, the software, behind software. All the hardware, yeah. Yeah, so look, I've got an iPhone here. I, I love iPhones, oh, right? I've got and an I've got Android. a Mac computer. Forget the Android. Oh, come on. The, the, the S5. Uh, well, anyway, I moved on, right? I've got, I'm on to I, well, I shouldn't be advertising. But, <laughs> but these guys, whether it be Android or whatever, they've got software driving their machines. Now, does the hardware make the software? No, it doesn't. No. 
the software was made by pretty clever people, mm -hmm. you know, in Seattle, and even cleverer people in Steve Jobs' empire. Uh, you know, and but making... I'm not taking sides in the in the in the war. <laughs> but, you know, but, but you see what I I'm saying? I might lose some of my audience. Yeah, look, it, it doesn't matter whether you use one or the other, but you've actually got software there which is driving these machines. Now that's just machines which are not alive. We've got the same system in us. We've got tiny little molecules which are actually ordered in a particular way, which are according to software. So you've got G, A, C, and T, gunan, adenine, cytosine, yeah. and thymine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know all the rest. Triplets of DNA uh, are actually uh, ordered in a, such a way as to have a program of stuff which is driving the system. Now, now, question for you here, Dr. McIntosh. So, so uh, we, we are going to... I want to, I'm curious to know, you've been involved in a lot of debates and when you bring this up, how does somebody typically respond yeah. to the idea that information is, um, is, is, you know, this, this claim you're saying, cause it seems very difficult to overcome this they argument. They will say, oh, making. we'll eventually solve it. That's what they usually say. Okay. Which is back to what you were saying earlier, but it's fundamental. You've got to have the right perspective in order to solve this. And look, when we b approach things from a creation angle, we actually make progress. It is absolutely a lie to say that the creation position closes down research. Actually, it opens up research. Because I know that the software is, could have arisen by accident, many people, not me personally, but many people from my persuasion, when it came to this issue of the software in Living Systems, mm. they said... Uh, that that so-called junk DNA is not junk. We've been they've been saying it for ten years or more. Yeah. Do you know what happened in 2012? No. What they admitted it. It's the not. The paper junk. came out which said, you know, all that stuff that we thought was junk from our evolutionary past. You know, that 90 percent of what whatever it was of the D, the human genome they said was junk. Yeah. We now think that it's not junk. It's got lots of switches which actually controls the coding part of the DNA. The trouble is we'd been saying that, not me personally, but people from my side had been saying that. Paul Nelson from the Discovery Institute mm -hmm. had particularly been saying it, and he was proved correct. In other words, the creation position actually was opening up a better route to look at the data. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Made a prediction. It was true. It and actually it was true, happened. And, it, and it, they were correct. Yeah. And, and the I, atheists won't admit it. Now, when we look at the software, we're actually looking at living beings right now to help us figure out our software that we're using in, in our technology and things like that. Yeah, and go, the better technology <laughs> in the iPhone. <laughs> they are looking at software in living or all we're doing is copying the grand designer. Oh, you're talking so, about bioengineering and that yeah, sort of all thing. All of that, yeah. yes. Yeah, when they look at dragonflies and how they fly or I've seen some ones they look at, at the, uh, the fins of whales and how they move yeah. through the water and... All that kind of stuff. And I'm working on the bombardier beetle. You mm. didn't mention it earlier oh. because you probably didn't know that. But yeah. I'm, I've been working on the bombardier beetle. And my testimony is because I knew that God had made that beetle. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was a sophisticated system which I needed to understand. And due to a, a combination of myself and a biologist who works at Cornell University, he's died now. But we actually sussed out that there was not just an inlet valve, but an exhaust valve. Hmm. And because I was determined to follow this through, we actually understood part of how the bombardier beetle works. Because I have a creation belief, it opened up new research. Now, is so that my testimony is that it does not close down research. When you have a creation position, it opens up research and it gives glory to God who has made it. That's, that's fantastic. There's a lovely verse in Psalm 100 which says this. Let me just share it with you, Kevin. It says, know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We didn't make ourselves. God made us. The bombardier beetle didn't make itself. God made it. The plant didn't make itself. God made it. And the significance here is that if it was produced by random chance, it's going to be far less likely that it's going to be useful versus if it's made by a brilliant mind, we want to mimic it because, yeah. wow, this this is yeah. something that um, we can learn from. Exactly. My colleague Stuart Burgess is copying the dragonfly that you mentioned mm -hmm. and the amazing system of those wings. Yeah. It, it, it's incredibly complex, but we can learn from those wing designs to make even better unmanned aerial vehicles. Now, are there practical applications from what you're learning from the Bombardier Beetle as far as... Oh, yeah, definitely. The spray system is leading to a, a fuel new type of fuel injector, 
which hasn't oh, yet come onto the market, but we think that it will soon. Yeah, and you've been heavily involved in aerodynamics. Oh, and yeah, we talked about right. this, the jets and everything. And so. if you take just a common feather of a bird, you only need a feather to knock over this idea that there's no design in nature. A feather is a marvel of exquisite engineering. The barbs of a feather, you know, the barbs which yeah. come off the main yeah. rockets, mm -hmm. those barbs hang together due to a complicated hook sliding over a ridge system, which only comes under, it, it, it only becomes visible when you go into the microscope. Wow. And all this came about by random chance? No way. Yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying. That that's that's fantastic. My guests this evening are Dr. Andy McIntosh and Eric Hovind. Uh, we're having a, a great discussion. And on Monday and Tuesday, if you're if you're enjoying this, Dr. McIntosh is going to be involved in a debate on Monday. And this is over how old is the Earth and how do we determine how old the Earth is, both from a biblical and scientific perspective. That's out at the Creation Museum. If you want more in, information, you can visit apnahope.org and um, He's also going to be debating on Tuesday, 7 o'clock at San Diego State University. That's with Jeff Archer, president of the Atheist Coalition of San Diego. And I very much encourage you to, to uh, show up to these debates. I think you'll find them very, very educational and a huge uh, blessing to you. Hey, I want to just throw in some of our listeners out there have friends that believe in evolution. Mm -hmm. And here we've been sitting here be beating up on it pretty bad. What do you say no, to somebody? I, no, no, come on. We're not be beating them up. Well, no, no, no. Beating yeah. up on evolution. I'm sorry. Yeah, not on, yeah, not yeah. on them. We have on, to be friends on with this those idea. who might Agreed. disagree so with us. how would you say something like this to them? Would you just start showing them these complexities? Well, look, we, we need to be kind to, to right. those who disagree with us. And if I'm, if I am disagreeing with an atheist, which of course I will be on Tuesday, I respect him as a person, but right. I obviously totally disagree with his position. Yeah. Right. And I think we need to love people. And not, not be unkind to them personally. And people sometimes, even people who are Christians who disagree with me and take a theistic evolutionist position, and I don't think Peter Payne would do this, but I have known others, I won't name them, who've actually very much looked down on a Christian who believes in creation. Well, we don't do the same. You know, we, we say, look, the truth will stand. Yeah. And even if people make ad hominem comments, we don't do the same. We must show kindness and love to those who disagree, we don't be patronizing. I'm sorry, I don't wish to sound that either. We just treat them as people. We deal with the arguments and we, we show a courtesy and a kindness, which generally, by the way, may I compliment you all, you get it far more courtesy over here in America than you do in Britain. It becomes very, you know, pretty polarized sometimes wow. in England. Yeah. But I've shown, I, I've seen here much greater respect in both sides of the United States. I debated somebody over in the East Coast in New York State University. My debates are available, by the way, if you go to my website, www.andymackintosh.org, you'll find all my materials there. But I debated this gentleman, and it was a very courteous debate. And I think courtesy is very important. It's not just what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, I think uh, <coughs> I always uh, bring out Ray Comfort because I, I love that guy to death uh, and what he's, he's doing. Great. He's great. Yeah, um, I, it's amazing to me how he can get somebody to say, yes, I'm a liar, a murderer, a thief, you know, a thief, um, an adulterer at heart. And then uh, the person is smiling, you know, and <laughs> I think it's interesting because uh, the vibe he's giving off is I love people and I love you and I care about you. And I think that's so important. So for all our listeners out there, I hope... Uh, that, you know, we want to come across as uh, people who are very much interested in knowing the truth. Uh, and I believe that when we seek truth, and uh, whether that's in science, history, or logic, that we ultimately end up at Christ. And um, that when we seek Christ, we end up at truth. And and we do, we the Bible is very clear. We're not to sacrifice our minds in the name of uh, a religion or a belief system. And this goes for Christians, too, because Christians can be in error, and that's been throughout history. And so what we have to do is humbly pursue truth at all costs. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, that's what we're attempting to do through these debates and through this radio show. Uh, we want people to know the truth. You know, so often I see people, once they learn this information and they've got the stuff on the Bombardier Beetle or your stuff on flights and the feathers— they can't wait to go bash people over the head with it to win an argument. Mm. Yeah. And that's why I think what we're saying yeah, here is, hey, be man, careful. don't forget, man. That's why the, the passage in 1 Peter chapter 3 comes with a warning. Yeah. Do this with love, with meekness yeah. and gentleness right. and respect. Because, right. yes, we want to win arguments, but we're not going out. We're not just trying to win arguments. We're trying to get them to the cross and of my Christ. And my main concern, actually, is for the church. 
because it's when Christians don't believe in creation that we have the greatest problem. I don't expect the world to immediately accept the arguments because they've got an evolutionary mindset. But the Christian should have a biblical mindset. And when he's got a biblical mindset, he shouldn't be embracing evolution as well. Correct. Now, yeah. even though I'm, you know, I'm going to be trying to be kind with Peter tomorrow, basically we can't have evolution and yeah, creation. You yeah. can't have them together in my view. Okay. So, um, guys, I want to say thank you so much for being on the air with me tonight. Our show is just about over here. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for yeah. going through the break as well. You didn't have the jingle. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you lost it. You worked. You can. You, it worked. Yes. <laughs> you can. Well well pressure, man. We're gonna have to thank Nick uh, over in the studio. There, he's the one. Uh, uh, so you can thank him. Give good. Give him, lost the jingle. <laughs> give, That's give awesome. Give him a high five <laughs> there at the end. Nick, you're gonna have to uh, pay for uh, my yeah. uh, my last. <laughs> hey, let's just all go. God bless you. Let's just all go to AndyMcIntosh.com, and that way we'll uh, we'll. Uh, We'll we'll, uh, we'll you, get some. You draw yeah. the checks from there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Creationtoday.org, Creationtoday.org, Andy Macintosh. Uh, dot com and uh, my website's educateforlife.org. We'll be back Truth next and week. Truthandscience.org. Truthandscience.org. We'll be back next week. Uh, God bless you. Have a fantastic evening. See you at the debates. God bless. Ooh.